Father, we thank you this morning for the privilege to, to minister and also for the privilege to sit in your presence. Dear God, we pray that you open our minds that we may comprehend scripture. That, Father, as we speak and share and read this word, you will help us to understand that which you want us to know. So, Lord, change us, renew our minds, and let your will be done. Continue to prepare us for your coming, because you are coming for a church that has no spot, that has no wrinkle. So help us, Lord, that as we share, even today, your work in us will be in progress. In Jesus' name, amen. So turn with me to the book of uh, Romans. Romans chapter 14, we shall read a few verses and make sense out of them. Romans chapter 14, verse 14. I know and I'm, I know and I'm convinced by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Yet if your brother is grieved because of your food, you are no longer walking in love. Do not destroy with your food the one for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for the man who eats with offense. It is good neither to eat meat, nor drink wine, nor do anything by which your brother stumbles, or is offended, or is made weak. Do you have faith? Have it to yourself before God. Happy is he who does not condemn himself in what he approves. So this morning I want to share with you on a subject I've entitled, For the Sake of Your Brother. For the Sake of Your Brother. So in case you are writing, uh, that can be a good topic to look at. There is a school of thought that proposes that people should pursue happiness. This school postulates that it does not matter what other people think about your activities, that what matters is what you want, when you want it, as you want it. Some motivational speakers encourage their audiences to pursue happiness. Some celebrities also encourage their viewers to pursue happiness. In pursuance of happiness, there is a point where you cease to care whether what you are doing offends anyone, as long as you derive pleasure in what you're doing. But when we look at the scriptures closely, and this discussion and this sharing is for us as believers, because the Spirit of the Lord was speaking through Paul, specifically to the believers. And in verse 15 it says, that yet if your brother is grieved because of your food. Now the picture of food and drinks as used in this text, are reflective of what is lawful, what is acceptable, what is lawful. Lawful as in scripture, not lawful in the context of the secular world. So he uses the picture of food and drink to demonstrate this point. 
So the scripture says that if your brother is grieved because of your lawful action, you are no longer walking in love. You are no longer walking in love. And then it goes on to say that do not destroy with your food, with your lawful action, the one for whom Christ died. Jesus is very defensive of his church. He's very jealous of his church. We read a text, a verse in Mark chapter 9, verse 42. Allow me to read that verse, but our discussion will be mainly here. So let's just look at that scripture in Mark 9, uh, 40, uh, Mark 9, 42. And then we come back to Romans 14. Are you there? Mark chapter 9, verse 42. The Bible says in that verse that, And whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would, better, it would be better for him if a milestone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. Better than what? Okay? We, we will discuss as we, as we progress. So, the, the scripture is teaching us that although we can be allowed to do certain things, although it is acceptable even in scripture, I mean, what's wrong with eating? What's wrong with drinking? Isn't it the Lord God who created all these things for us to enjoy? But the Bible says that if your brother is grieved, is offended, stumbles, or is made weak because of your lawful action, because of your eating, because of, your, of what you are eating or what you are drinking, then the scripture says we no longer walk in love. Verse 17 focuses our attention to what it is that we need to give our effort. So it says, the kingdom of God is not food and is not drink, but righteousness. Righteousness means to be right with God. That the kingdom of God is about doing what is right before the eyes of God. And then it says it is also about peace. Peace with who? Peace with your brother. Look at verse 19. It reveals to whom we should have peace. It says, therefore let us pursue the things which make for peace. The kingdom of God is about living in peace with your brother. When I say brother, I mean your a brother in Christ, a sister in Christ. Living in peace, not offending them because of what you are enjoying. And so it says we should pursue the things which make for peace. And it also talks about and the things by which we may edify others. The Bible says that the authority given to, to, the, to, 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 to ministers is to edify the church and not to destroy it. And so this piece we are talking about is that whatever we are doing, lawful as it may be, it should be to, to enable our brother who is watching you, to enable your sister who is watching you, be built up in Christ, be strengthened, be encouraged. And therefore, whatever that we may do that is unlawful, is lawful but does not bring home that that desire, that, 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 that output, that impact, we should refrain. And then it says, and joy. The kingdom of God is not food, is not drinks, but righteousness, being right with God, and peace, 
being at peace with your brothers. And joy. Joy speaks about happiness. When is the Holy Spirit happy? The Spirit of the Lord is happy when we are building up the body of Christ. The Spirit of the Lord is happy when whatever we are doing is edifying the people that are seeing you, are watching you, are benefiting from you. The Spirit of the Lord is happy when we are not destroying the ones for whom Christ died. I, I, I said that Christ is very defensive of his church. And rightly so. Because every soul that is saved is saved because he shed his own blood for the redemption of that soul. And so he, he desires that nothing is done that can stumble that soul. Nothing is done that can offend or weaken that soul. And so we learn from this text that we should not destroy the work of God for the sake of food in verse 20. And as I said, food represents what is lawful. And then it goes on to say that indeed all things are pure, but it is evil for the man who eats with offense. It is evil for a person to eat his food, to drink his, his drinks, and the believers around them are offended. Let me give you an example. Suppose there is a person who has gotten saved and initially was a Muslim. And we know that in the faith of Muslims, they are still stuck in not appreciating that all things are pure and are good for food. And in that faith, eating pork is a big, is, is offense, offense, to say the least. So there is this believer who, from the rigor of Islamic teaching, still thinks pork is forbidden. And then there is this other believer who has grown in Christ and appreciates that as long as you give thanks, you eat. But as you enjoy your pork, the other believer is being offended. The other believer is stumbling. The other believer is made weak. And the scripture is saying that whether we eat or we drink, or we do anything, it should not stumble, it should not offend, it should not make weak another believer. So the assertion that we pursue happiness does not hold in the Christian life. Because we are told that we pursue peace. Praise the Lord. That we should pursue peace with our brothers. We should pursue righteousness and we should pursue joy in the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. And that may necessitate that you refrain from doing certain things at certain times. Even when they are lawful. Even when they are lawful for the sake of your brother. For the sake of of the other brother. You refrain from enjoying what ordinarily you would have loved. That is not pursuing happiness. Praise the Lord. That is not pursuing happiness. And Jesus says that if anyone will cause a believer to stumble, it is better they tie a big stone and throw them into the sea. And as I said, better than what? Because there, is, there are worse consequences when you make a believer to stumble. So the way we dress, therefore, should matter. The way you dress your hair, the way you create tattoos on your arms or wherever, matter. Because there may be a believer 
who will be offended at what you have done. The way we post things on the social platform matters. Is what you're posting going to build the believers? I'm talking exclusively to believers. I'm not talking about social group platforms uh, of your hobbies, uh, of uh, team, I don't know, team which goes every weekend to wherever. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about social platforms that belong to church. Because this address is for us believers that we should refrain from doing anything that would stumble, offend another believer. So whereas you have a right to send there anything you would want, whereas it may be lawful, the question is, we need to offend another believer. The way we take our managerial actions, especially when you are pretending over believers, we need to offend, we need to weaken or stumble another believer. And since today is a cell day, allow me to speak about cell activities. The way we carry on our cell activities, the talk that we generate in our cells, does it edify a believer? The food that we serve in our cells, and all mannerism we exhibit, does it modify, edify the believers that attend? The way we behave on the road, especially as drivers, does it edify the believers that may see you? And you see, the problem is that sometimes you don't know who is a believer and who is not. One time I boarded a taxi from that side of Boise. I was coming here. So when we came out, as I attempted to pay, a certain lady offered to pay for me. And for me, I didn't, I'd, I've never seen that woman, according to me. And if I met her today, I would not recognize her anyway. But apparently she says that somewhere we had fellowshiped together, I don't know where. There are people who watch you who know you as a believer and you have no idea. You have no idea. And so the way we, we drive on our roads, sometimes you see a car with a Jesus sticker. With a full gospel sticker. Drives past you and you've been all in a line waiting patiently for someone to go and, and then this person just zzz, Edifying a believer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How would this believer see you if you waited patiently in a jam also? Do you think it will lead to impatience or more grace to be patient? Praise the Lord. The way we relate with taxi conductors. You know how unreasonable our taxi conductors can be. The way we relate when we are dating. Because as you date, there are people watching you. And they, want, they, they may be encouraged or they may be weakened. The way we relate in courtship. The way we relate in marriage. And the Bible is encouraging us that whatever we do, It is lawful for me to demonstrate or show signs of affection to my wife. She's my wife, after all. But depending on where I demonstrate those signs, it may offend someone. Are you following? Eh? It may offend. It is lawful for me. I mean, she's my wife. I have a certificate from the church. To do whatever I need with her. But the Bible says that 
it is good neither to eat nor to drink nor do anything by which your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak. You refrain for the sake of your sister. You refrain for the sake of your brother. Some of them you may not have met them, but you refrain. This morning I have a very short message for the sake of your brother. So I, I don't know how we carry on with our activities, but the Bible is encouraging us that because of that brother, please don't eat, please don't drink, or do anything that will offend them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you this morning for the encouragement that we obtain from the scriptures. We ask you, Lord, to help us to conduct ourselves in a manner that is worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we acknowledge, Lord, we are fallen short of that many times. But Lord, from today, help us that by your grace, we will refrain for the sake of our brother, for the sake of our sisters. We will be mindful the way we dress. We will be mindful the way we do our work. We will be mindful the speech that comes from our, our lips. So that, Lord, we can build and edify each other. For the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.